Hello Internet, and welcome back to another Pokemon Challenge Run. If you've missed out on my other challenge videos, check the link in the description for a playlist that'll have every video that I've done on this topic so far. This challenge run is going to be specifically unique because normally I only use one Pokemon to beat the game, but this time we're going to use six. And they're going to be babies. And they're going to be pretty bad. To start this challenge, I used the Universal Randomizer to substitute Chikorita out for Elikid, the first baby on my team. Then I modify the wild Pokemon in the first route to be all the other babies that I'll need to catch for this playthrough. The other babies I'm going to use is Smoochum, Magby, Igglybuff, and Togepi. Oh, and Pichu. So the question that we're going to answer in this video is can you beat Pokemon Crystal using only a team of babies? The rules for this challenge are as follows. I can't use any items in battle, no X items, no potions, no full restores, but giving my babies items to hold is perfectly allowed. I'll also be able to catch a few extra Pokemon for HM use only, and they won't be battling at all. Like most playthroughs, the first battle is with your rival, and it's not really a challenge at all. I simply use Quick Attack a couple times, which is a nice move to start with, until we knock out our Cyndaquil opponent. After that's taken care of, we do some running around in the first route and catch all the babies we need for this playthrough. Right here I'm going to be showing off some of the move sets they start with, and a couple of them can't even attack, so it's going to be tough to train them up. After all, this is a challenge run, so I gotta deal with it. I should also mention that starting with 6 Pokemon at the very beginning of the game is really a pain in the Beloy. Mainly because, well, there's not much experience to go around, and when some of your Pokemon can't even attack, you know you're in for a rough playthrough. For this playthrough, especially in the beginning, I'm gonna need all the experience I can get. So after giving some wild Pokemon the Woot Wops, he finally learns some actually attacking moves, and we move on to the Bellsprout Tower, where we're gonna do a little bit more leveling up before taking on Faulkner. With the Sprout Tower out of the way, and some experience under our belt, it's time to take on our first gym battle of the playthrough. I start this fight off with Frieza, the Smoochum, and I start giving the Pidgey some pounds. And as you'll quickly realize, I'm not doing crap for damage, so I swap out to Beloy, the Togepi. I go for some metronomes to see if we can get lucky, and the first attack we get is Confusion, which I'm definitely okay with. After sustaining a small amount of damage, we go for one more metronome, and we get that big old cross chop. And that's gonna take Pidgey out relatively easy. Now it's time to deal with the head bourbon town, Pidgeotto. And for that, we send out our good old pal Achu to give him a sweet kiss. This will confuse our opponent and hopefully give us an easier time in the battle. After taking a Womp from Tackle, we go for a Thunder Shock and we actually do a good chunk of damage. Which is surprising because up until this point, Achu has just been getting knocked out by everything he fights. Going for one more Thunder Shock, we're going to knock out this Pidgeotto and claim our first badge. It's also worth noting that at this point, we get the TM for Mud Slap, which we're going to teach to Togepi because, well, he needs an attacking move even if it is pretty bad. At least it lowers accuracy. Also, another really cool thing is our spark plug here actually learned Thunder Punch at like level 9, which is a pretty strong move and actually really OP if you ask me. After clearing out the rockets in the Slowpoke well, it's time to deal with Bugsy, and his team is pretty weak in general. Scyther's the only threat, the other two Pokemon can barely put a dent in me. I start the fight off with Igglybuff because I want to see if I can use Sleep to help me kill it and get some experience, but it's just too tanky in general. Or maybe it's that Igglybuff is too weak. Either way, I swap out to Goofball, and I proceed to start embering the crap out of these guys. The Scyther does become a problem as it starts building up its Fury Cutter damage. Even though it's not very effective, it's going to build power every turn. And my Ember is actually doing less damage than I would have liked it to do. And unfortunately, as you might have guessed, we knock it down into orange health with two Embers, and the third one leaves it with just a shred. And by this time, since it's faster than me and the Fury Cutter is built up, it's gonna knock out my Goofball. Which is sad, because I really wanted that experience, but I swap out to someone who needs it more. Luckily, his Fury Cutter misses, because that would have definitely one-hit my team, as I was about the fourth or fifth build-up on it. After knocking it out, we get two levels on our Frieza, and we swap out to Spark Plug to finish off the fight. Through the ridiculous power of our Thunder Punch, we knock him down to nearly dead, take a string shot, and then punch him again. And with that, we've collected our second badge for these babies. Before we can head on to the third badge, we first have to take out our rival. I start by putting the gas to sleep with Igglybuff, and then I go for some Mud Slaps with Togepi. After witnessing the terrible Mud Slap damage, I try my luck with a Metronome. And wouldn't you know, we get Magnitude, and it's Magnitude 7. And this is going to be more than enough to take the Ghastly out, which I'm completely happy with. Now it's time to deal with a pesky Zubat. I switch out to Achu and go for some Thundershocks. 
The supersonic fails on me two times, which is incredibly lucky, but even luckier than that, we get the paralyzed with Thundershock, which rarely happens. After that, it's only a matter of time and a couple more Thundershocks before we take Zubat out. Easy peasy. Now it's time to deal with his ace in the hole. After nearly being one shot by Ember, we go for the Thunder Wave to get the paralysis on Quilava. After that, we go for a sweet kiss to confuse it and hopefully allow our team to take him out much easier. Sadly, Pichu did not survive, but he definitely did his job. Kulava hurts himself on the first turn, and we get a nice powerful thunder punch on him, setting him up to die in the next hit. And with that, we defeated our rival yet again. After the far-fetched mini-quest in the Ilex Forest, I head back into town and pick up a charcoal from the charcoal kiln. And I'm going to give this to Magby in order to power up his fire-type moves. We need every help we can get. As is customary for most of these crystal playthroughs, we're going to stop here in the Elix Forest and pick up the Headbutt TM and teach it to Iglybuff. We need a good normal type move we can get stabbed from, and Headbutt turns out to be the earliest one we can find, and it has a chance to flinch the opponent. But being the Iglybuff is so slow, I highly doubt we'll be seeing any of that. After grinding up some levels and collecting some money from the trainers to the north of Goldenrod City, we come to the department store and pick up all of the elemental punches, as well as another Headbutt TM just to increase the move pools on our babies, and it turns out that all of these babies can learn their specific elemental punch. Something I found pretty unique is that Ellie Kid can actually learn all of the elemental punches. So we go ahead and teach him all of them, and now he has a pretty versatile move pool, and he's a big asset to the team. We also throw a fire punch on Magby, and ice punch on Smoochum, giving them a good stab move to use in battle. With our increased move pools and strength, it's time to take on Whitney, the normal type gym leader. As you'll quickly note, our levels are significantly lower than her Pokemon, but with a team of 6, I feel like we can make this happen. I start by giving the Clefairy a sweet kiss, hoping that it'll hit itself a few times and give me a break. But unfortunately, it hits me with Double Slap four times, even though it's Double Slap. And I die. Next, I go to Puffkin and try to sing it to sleep, but it didn't affect it. And then Whitney kicks in the strats and mimics my sing. Luckily, the next one hits and allows me to get off a couple of headbutts. Unfortunately though, before I can take it out, it wakes up and puts me to sleep with my own sing. And then at that point it uses metronome and just simply whittles me down. First it gets a vice grip, and then it gets a double edge which definitely kills me. Next I throw out Frieza and avenge my fallen comrade with a powerful ice punch. And we kill it. Now it's time to deal with Miltank, the absolute beast. First move it goes for is attract which is going to make it hard for me to hit it. And I'm going to go for some charms to try to lower its attack stats so that I can actually survive. I successfully get two of them off and I'm feeling pretty good at this point, so I go for a mud slap to try to lower the accuracy so that rollout can't build up. It doesn't do anything for damage, but as long as I can get those accuracy bonuses down, that's going to help me a lot. Unfortunately, it hits me three times, even with two mud slaps on it, and my infatuation with it keeps me from hitting it repeatedly. After doing as much mud slap damage as we can, we swap over to Goofball and decide to try to kill it. First it's going to use a tract on me once again which is going to make it very difficult to hit and I go for a leer to see how much we can do with headbutt. Magby actually has a decent attack stat compared to the other babies. Unfortunately I realize headbutt doesn't do crap for damage and we can't outspeed it so there's no sense in going for the flinch. On top of all that, my infatuation with the enemy mill tank keeps me from hitting it like every turn. I think I only hit once out of five times. Finally though, we do get a fire punch off and we hope to get a burn on it so that we can slowly whittle it down, but unfortunately, it doesn't go our way. On the bright side though, fire punch did do a decent chunk of damage and occasionally Miltank is missing his stomp. So I'm just going to go for as many fire punches as I can at this point until Goofball goes down. Right here as you'll probably see, our fire punch knocks it into killable range and we can actually take it down on the next turn. It happens to miss its stomp, but then we're too infatuated to hit it and the next hit kills us. Next we swap back over to Sparkplug as he is our strongest and fastest mon and we're going to go for a Thunder Punch. Unfortunately he milk drinks and now we're pretty much screwed again. Thunder Punch is doing decent damage but Miltake just keeps spamming milk drink and healing itself back up more than the damage I could deal. Luckily though we do get a paralysis on it which is going to make this a lot easier. Now his accuracy is super low and he's paralyzed which means he's probably not going to be able to hit us again for the rest of the fight. We knock it down into red health, and then of course it has to get another milk drink off. We continue to punch it repeatedly, with the power of thunder, we get the critical hit, he misses, and we finally kill it. That was way too long of a battle, guys. Next, we head over to the burnt tower to give a rival a beatdown once again. 
The first Pokemon, Haunter, goes down pretty easily after using Curse and hurting itself and then taking a couple Thunder Punches. Next he sends out a Magnemite that barely survives a Fire Punch with just a shred of health. After Thundershocking me, we take it out with one more Fire Punch to the face. Next up he sends a Zubat out and it's here that I realize how bad my Thundershock move actually is. It's starting to fall off at this point in the game. Luckily I used a tract on it and made it fall in love with me and it didn't finish off my little Achu here. And we're able to knock it out with three Thundershocks. His last Pokemon, Quilava, is really tough to deal with. Not only is it very much higher than my babies in level, it's also, well, a lot more powerful as a result. I pretty much use everyone on the team and throw the whole kitchen sink at this guy. Togepi lowers his accuracy with Mud Slap, Smoochum confuses him with Sweet Kiss, and then Goofball wraps things up with his beautiful head with a couple of headbutts. With our rival taken care of, it's time to take on the fourth gym leader, Morty. And the first couple of fights go about how you'd expect. I make it to the Gengar, and then get put to sleep, and then one shot by Dream Eater. After losing over and over though, I am knocking out a couple Pokemon each fight and allowing my team to level up. To deal with the first Ghastly, I start out with Frieza so that I can hit it with Confusion which is super effective against Poison type. This allows me to take out the first Pokemon without taking any damage or getting a curse placed on me. It would really help me out if Confusion was strong enough to one shot the next Pokemon Haunter but unfortunately it does leave it with just a shred. And then it's able to get a Nightshade on me, but I am able to finish next turn and then move on to the next challenge. The thing this Gengar likes to do, of course, is always put me to sleep, so I send out Puffkin to see if I can sing it to sleep first. Well, his hypnosis misses, but then my sing also misses. In the next turn, I get put to sleep, and Dream Eater is definitely going to one-shot me. Next, we send out Achu and try to hit it with the Thunder Wave, but unfortunately, we're not fast enough. One shot from Shadow Ball kills me from full HP, critical or not. Now it's time to put in some tactics I've used in my other playthroughs. Luckily his first hypnosis misses, and then I'm able to get off a couple of mud slaps. Each time I hit it, it's less likely the hypnosis is going to hit me on the next turn. My plan from here is to lower its accuracy enough to where hypnosis isn't consistent enough to knock out my whole team, and then also if I can, I want to get a sweet kiss on it so that it'll hit itself in confusion a few times. Luckily it actually works out for me. Once I get the maximum number of mud slap accuracy decreases I can, I start using metronome and actually do some damage. Sooner or later though, it does get the hypnosis off on me and then dream eaters me out of the game. All this was in vain though, because lo and behold, I used metronome too many times and eventually got whirlwind, which sent Gengar out of the fight and dragged in Haunter. This means I lost all the accuracy bonuses I worked hard to get, and I also lost the confusion I got on him. I'm sure it goes without saying that I obviously lost this fight. On the next fight, we actually managed to get things set up how we want them. Gengar misses his first hypnosis on Puffkin and allows me to sing him to sleep so that I can safely switch to Togepi and begin the mud slap process. This time I'm not going to risk using Metronome as it can simply mess up the fight if I get the wrong move. This time things go incredibly well and I even get him down to red health. For whatever reason he doesn't heal and I get to knock him out using only mud slap and the power of Beloy. That's definitely not the way I pictured myself taking out this Gengar, but we'll take it where we can get it. At this point, the fight is finally over, and two confusions from Frieza is going to take out the final Haunter. And with that, we've finally beaten Morty. And it only took about 37 tries. Next up is arguably the most easy gym in the game, Chuck, the fighting type user. Now why in the world someone this late in the game only has two Pokemon as a gym leader is definitely a good question. But either way, after what I just went through with Morty, I'll take an easy battle where I can get one. After sustaining three rounds of Fury Swipes, we deliver three Fire Punches to the jaw to this Primeape and we take him out. There you have it folks, a level 27 Goofball can take on a level 27 fully evolved Primeape. Next up is a level 30 Polyrath, and Goofball's already done all he can do for this fight. So before he goes down, I throw out a smoke screen just to try to make Dynamic Punch a little less accurate. Next we send out Elikid and deliver a thousand volts with a Thunder Punch to the jaw. Polyrath goes for a dynamic punch, and thanks to the smoke screen and its terrible accuracy, it misses. We hit it with another thunder punch, hoping for a critical hit, but we don't get it. However, we did knock it down into red health. But lastly, the dynamic punch does stick us right square in the forehead and knocks us out in one hit. We send it on over to Frieza, and for whatever reason, he doesn't heal, and we knock it out with a super effective confusion, gaining us a level and another gem badge. After defeating Chuck, we get the Dynamic Punch TM and we teach it to Magby in replace of Ember. Since we have Fire Punch already, I feel like this is a good trade-off because Dynamic Punch might come into handy. 
After giving the medicine to Jasmine in the lighthouse, it's finally time to take on her team, and I was honestly really terrified of this fight. The first Magnemite goes down in one hit from Fire Punch, and now it's time to deal with the Steelix. Before I throw away my ace in the hole Magby, I throw out Beloy to see if I can get some mud slaps on it to decrease Iron Tail's accuracy. The first one misses on its own, and then I start going to work on it. However, before we can even get off the second mud slap, he hits us with the clap, and we die. I throw out Pichu and Igglybuff to see if I can put it to sleep, or perhaps weaken it with Charm, but they both just get one shot. Next up is Elekid's turn, and he comes out and he starts fire punching away. Next, Steelix uses Screech on me, which lets me know that I'm definitely going to die as soon as he gets a hit off on me. And also, for whatever reason, my dumb brain tries to use Thunder Punch on it for the stab bonus, and it doesn't affect his ground type. I'm an idiot. After that, I check my chances with an Ice Punch to see if we can freeze it, but we don't get lucky. And then he Iron Tails me in the toe and kills me. R.I.P. Spark Plug. Next, we send out our Ace in the Hole Goofball and hit it with a powerful Fire Punch, and we knock it into red health. It goes for a screech, but luckily it doesn't hit, and then it hyper potions. Knowing that it would probably do that, I risk it and go for a dynamic punch here to try to get the confusion off to help me win. Thankfully, we actually get it, and now it's time to go to work on it. After it takes a fire punch and hurts itself, it's finally ready to die, and we finish it off. And that's Jasmine defeated. We actually beat it on the first try. And actually, I forgot there is one more Magnemite, but he just dies in one hit from fire punch anyway. Next, we bebop over to the rocket hideout and give it some boodly bops and woot wops, and then we chill for a minute, and then we do a little dance, and then we head out, like always. With the Team Rocket shenanigans taken care of, it's time to take on Price, the ice type gym leader. The first seal goes down with a couple of headbutts from Goofball, then comes out of water an ice type Dugong, who we deliver a thunder punch to and paralyze it in the process. And from here, it's pretty much just going to die. One more thunder punch to his goofy little face, and he goes down with no problem. The final Pokemon, Piloswine, gets his nose hair singed by a powerful punch from our goofball. And then he hits us with an icy wind, but it doesn't do much at all, and then we finish it off. And that, my friend, is the seventh gym badge for our babies. Oh yeah. Next, after a small amount of power grinding, we head over to the radio tower and take down the rocket noobs. And now every time we level up on our babies, we have to hold down B and prevent the evolution, which is kind of annoying. While trying to fight the 8th gym leader Claire, I realize that I'm going to hit a wall here trying to kill this Kingdra. Her Dragonairs go down no problem with a single Ice Punch, but this Kingdra is ultimately beefy. The only two moves in the game that are super effective against it is Twister and Dragon Rage, and Dragon Rage only does a set 40 damage. As if any of that mattered though, because I can't actually learn these moves. Instead, my strategy is try to inflict status on it with Dynamic Punch, or put it to sleep with Igglybuff, but unfortunately, I miss everything, and if I do, the Hyper Beam is just going to knock me out. And aside from all that, she Hyper Potion to full health, and by the time all this happens, all I have left is Togepi and Pichu, of which are definitely not going to survive. After a couple of fights though, things finally start to go my way. The first Pokemon Dragonair is always a one-shot for Smoochum, and then it just comes down to whittling down the Kingdra. Thanks to a critical hit from Elekid, we're able to knock it down into orange health and we finally land the dynamic punch. It would have been nice if it actually knocked it out there, and so it does hyper potion to full, but at least we got the confusion on it. After that, we do what we can and we swap out to Puffkin. Luckily, it hurts itself in confusion and allows us to get the sing on it and put it to sleep so that we can go to work on it without taking any damage. Unfortunately, it does wake up in the middle of us headbutting it, but now it's pretty low health and we switch out to Frieza for the easy kill. Now it's just a matter of ice punching the rest of the Dragonairs, and we've claimed the 8th Gym Badge. Now it's time to take on the Elite Four, but before we can even get there, our rival Trippy wants to have another battle where we're going to have to slap him around and show him who's boss. For the first Pokemon Sneasel, I let Beloy have a chance to shine and hit him with a couple of double edges to take him out, and he even gets the critical hit. Next out he sends Golbat, who I send Sparkplug in to give him a nice powerful Thunderbolt. Next up is a Magneton, who Goofball has no problem killing in one hit with a flamethrower. Next, I swap out to Frieza to deliver a damaging blow from Psychic. It's pretty crazy that these baby Pokemon actually learn such powerful moves just by leveling up. Now it's time to deal with his ace in the hole, Typhlosion. I swap out to Puffkin and give it a sweet kiss to confuse it, and hope that it'll hit itself a few times while I headbutt away at it. Which actually works pretty decently at first. The only move that it gets off during the confusion is Smokescreen, which doesn't actually affect my headbutt, and I still get the hits on it. 
After it hurting itself a few times and giving it a few headbutts, we knock it down to orange health, but it does snap out of it and hit me with flame wheel. Before I can confuse it again, it outspeeds me and actually takes me down. And that's unfortunate, I wanted Puffkin to shine there. To avenge my fallen comrade, I send out Goofball and deliver a powerful dynamic punch and take it down. All this left now is a Kadabra, which I easily kill with two ice punches. And that's the rival defeated. Now we're moving on to the Elite Four. The first Elite Four member is Will, the Psychic type user. Lucky for me, all of his Psychic type Pokemon have a secondary typing that allows me to gain advantage. The first Pokemon goes down with a single Ice Punch, and the next Pokemon Jinx actually survives a flamethrower, which I definitely didn't expect, but another one's gonna finish it off no problem. Next out he sends a Slowbro, but it's no problem at all for our Spark Plug, who has Thunderbolt now, and he takes him out with ease. Next up for Exeggutor, we take him out with an easy one-shot from Flamethrower. The final Pokemon, Zatu, actually manages to outspeed us and hit us with Confuse Ray. After that happens, we punch ourselves in the face a few times, take a few Psychics, but finally, we do land the hit. And when we do, it's definitely a one-shot. And that's Elite Four Will defeated. For the next Elite Four member, Koga, I really don't have too much difficulties here either. Ariados is going to go down with a simple Flamethrower, as well as Fortress being that it's four times weak to fire. Next up, when he sends out Muck, I figured that Frieza can one-shot him with Psychic, but I was actually a little bit surprised. We knocked it down into orange health, and we die from a single Sludge Bomb. But at any rate, we send out Elikid and we finish it off with a Thunderbolt. Next, he sends out Venomoth, who uses Toxic on us, but we take it down in two Fire Punches. Next up is Crobat, who is extremely fast and moderately strong. We nearly kill him with a couple of Thunderbolts, but he does get full restored to full health, but thanks to more super effective hits, we're able to knock him back down and finish him off without taking too much damage. And that's Elite Four Koga in the bag. Third in line, it's Bruno, the fighting type specialist, but this fight isn't going to be an issue at all. My plan going into this fight is just to spam Psychic with Frieza and kill them all in one hit. Unfortunately, Hitmontop survives with just a shred and sets up a dig, so I'm forced to sack Achu to take the damage so I can continue to use Psychic in the fight. Now that Dig's out of the way, I send Frieza back out and finish it off with an Ice Punch. Hitmonchan's up next, and he does manage to get a Mach Punch on me, but Psychic is going to actually kill him in one hit. To give Frieza a break, I send out Puffkin and use a Solar Beam on the Onyx, which manages to kill it in one shot. Back over to Frieza, we one-shot the Hitmonlee and the Machamp, and then the battle is ours. Bruno is defeated. Only one member to go. The last member, Karen, uses Dark-type Pokemon, and she leads off with an Umbreon. After giving it a sweet kiss to confuse it with Frieza, we swap over to Achu to give him a chance to prove himself. We use Attract on it, and we paralyze it with Thunder Wave in order to reduce the amount of hits we take. Then we proceed to headbutt it, but unfortunately, Achu just can't hang with the big boys. He always dies. Our good old pal Puffkin comes out and finishes the job. Next up is a measly Vileplume, who we kill with one flamethrower. Then we send out Frieza to deal with Gengar, who actually outspeeds us and licks us, but we do kill it in one hit with Psychic. Next up is a Houndoom, which I really don't have any moves to deal with. Mudslap is my only super effective option, and that thing is weak as crap. I send out Beloy to try to get some damage off and lower his accuracy, but he just turns me into scrambled eggs. Good job, Beloy. At least you got one hit off before you died. Next, it's time to come up with a new strategy. I throw out Goofball because at least he can maybe resist the flamethrower and stay alive, and we get a Confuse Ray off on it because we actually outspeed it. It hurts itself in confusion, and this is what I'm banking on. I start throwing smoke screens at it to reduce its accuracy so that no matter what, whoever I send out next has enough time to take it out. This only works for so long though, and before too long he gets the crunch off on me, which I did not know he had, and that's going to kill me very quickly. But we did get a few smoke screens off on it before we died, and we tried to get the confusion back with Dynamic Punch, but it wouldn't fly. Next we send out Frieza, hoping we can get some damage off, but he just whomps us down in one hit. Spark Plug is my last Pokemon and my last hope. Even after Houndoom heals to full HP with a Hyper Potion, we're still able to knock him out with 5 HP to spare. I thought Murkrow was going to be no problem, but a quick attack finishes me off embarrassingly. On the run back though, we go for a different strategy on Houndoom. We get the confusion on him right before we die with Goofball, and then we send out Achu to prove himself. This time he actually does. Houndoom is confused and hurts himself, which allows me to get the Thunder Wave off on him and paralyze him, setting myself up in a good position. After that, we use Headbutt to do as much damage as we can before we go down. The only thing that really matters is that Sparkplug is full HP and ready to take down the final Murkrow. 
We send out Beloy and we go for some Mud Slaps to reduce his accuracy, but he gets Max Potion. Seeing his HP bar rise to full again really depressed me, and I honestly thought that the fight was probably over. But we get some lucky Paralyze rolls and we continue to Mud Slap it down so that even if it does hit, hopefully it'll miss. After getting it down reasonably low and getting the maximum amount of Mud Slaps on it, we start going for Double Edge. We're all in here. Beloy actually manages to take out the Houndoom which was incredibly surprising and relieving at the same time. All that's left now is a Murkrow, which is going to go down in one hit from Thunderbolt. And that's the final member of the Elite Four. It's time to take on the champion, Lance. Now it's time to deal with the Ultimate Dragon Master. I was actually terrified of this fight, but it goes surprisingly well. The first Pokemon, Gyarados, is water and flying and goes down with the Thunderbolt no problem. The second Pokemon, Dragonite, is also a one-shot for Ice Beam. Then comes out Charizard. Now I know Elekid can use Thunderbolt on this thing, but I'm not entirely sure that I'll outspeed it. So I send out Goofball who has at least some type resistances, and I use Confuse Ray, and then throw the Smoke Balls at it to lower its accuracy. I can get off a couple before he manages to take me down, which sets me up in a good position to actually kill it with Elekid. He hyperbeams me, and I die. Next I send out Elekid, and we manage to one-shot it with Thunderbolt because he was on cooldown from the hyperbeam. Next up is another Dragonite, which is just an easy one-shot for Frieza and the Ice Punch. Thank God for that. Next up is a very scary Aerodactyl. It nearly dies in one shot from Ice Punch, which indicates to me that on a higher damage roll we probably could have gotten it, but unfortunately now we're going to die to Rock Slide. But Frieza did a good job. She took out the two Dragonites, so I'm very pleased with the performance. I send out Beloy to finish the job, and he is an absolute tank. With just 96 HP, we manage to survive a Hyper Beam from an Aerodactyl and finish it off with Double Edge. Togepi the real MVP here, guys. All that's left now is a Dragonite, but unfortunately this one is level 50. If I could have had Smoochum alive here, that would have saved my butt, but I go for a nice punch anyway with Elekid to see what we can do. It does a surprising amount of damage and nearly kills it, but it uses Outrage on me, which terrifies me. Luckily we survive with just a shred of health, and we're able to kill it with another Ice Punch. And with that, we have conquered the entire Johto region with just a team of babies and no items in battle. But our journey's not quite over yet. After honoring our team of babies in the Hall of Fame, it's time to buckle up and get ready for another region. We still have to take on the battle against Red to find out truly can you beat Pokemon Crystal version using only a team of babies. But much like my other Pokemon Crystal runs, I'm not going to include the gym battles in Kanto because they're just simply too easy. We're just going to skip right to the juicy stuff. The 8th and final Kanto Gym Leader Blue is honestly the hardest battle that I've faced up to this point. I had to try this one at least like 20 times in order to get through this and my Pokemon as a result were growing in massive amounts of levels. Finally though, with a little bit of luck, we're finally getting some good results. First Pidgeot goes down in one Ice Punch, and then comes out the Arcanine. Now like most of this playthrough, I really don't have anything to deal with fire types, so I go to Goofball in order to get the type resistances and go for a Confuse Ray. Thank God for that move. After it hurting itself in confusion a few times and some fire blasts, we do get it down to red HP. I wish that could have killed it, because now it's just going to full restore to full HP and we're back at square one. We repeat the process and get it down to red health again, but gosh dang it, he pulls out the wallet and gives him a full restore. How many of these freaking things do you have? After all that's said and done, we get it down to orange health, but for the life of me, I just couldn't finish it off with Goofball, no matter how hard he tried. Next, we send out Frieza, and we finish it off with a Psychic. Next, we face off with an Alakazam, who hits us dangerously hard with a Psychic, even though it's not very effective, but a single Ice Punch will take it out. Next up is a Rhydon, but that poor thing can definitely not survive an Ice Punch. Next up, he sends out his Gyarados, but you already know what we're going to do to that. We blast it with a Thunderbolt for a one-shot. Next up is an Exeggutor, who goes for a Leech Seed, and as a result takes two Fire Punches to the Dome, and he dies. And with that, we have our last badge in Kanto, and we can take on the Ultimate Trainer, Red. Now for Red, I made the mistake of underestimating him and trying to take him on at my current level, but that went about how you'd expect. Lucky for me, there's a lot of high level Pokemon in the area that are easy to kill and give large amounts of experience. So I grinded up my levels to match about where his are and then I take him on. 
first Pokemon Pikachu goes down with an easy blizzard, thank goodness, because that thing can paralyze me and do all sorts of terrible things. Next up is this Charizard, who is an absolute beast, but luckily we can outspeed it with Spark Plug and hit it with a Thunder, which does give me the one hit KO. Next up is Espeon, who is super fast and hits like a truck, so I send out Frieza for the type resistance and go for a blizzard. To my surprise, with the stab and the never melt ice, we actually managed to get the one shot on it, which is really good because that thing was always clearing my team. Next up is the wall, Snorlax, and I decided to keep Frieza out and go for a sweet kiss on it because we need this thing to give us some freebies. With some luck, it hits itself in confusion and we go for a blizzard just to get some damage off. And by the hair on my chinny chin chin, we freaking freeze it, and that makes it a lot easier to deal with this thing. We simply attack it a few more times and take it out. I'll definitely take that one. Next up is a Weenasaur, and I decide I'll just continue to let Frieza do her thing. She's really being the star player here. One single blizzard is going to eliminate that thing from the face of the planet. Next up is the final Pokemon, Blastoise. We send out Sparkplug to do what he does best and shock the crap out of it. But of course he misses, but then ironically and for whatever reason, Blastoise sets up a rain dance, which gives us 100% accuracy with Thunder. It's like he knew he was already beaten and just decides to give me the win. As I'm literally laughing out loud at how easy it was, he actually survives, and then he returns the favor with a Surf, and it does a massive chunk of damage. We literally only survive with one hit point. One hit point. What an insane treat and way to end the playthrough. With one hit point left, our champion Sparkplug takes him out. And with that guys, we have defeated the entire game and the strongest trainer in the game with just a team of babies and no items in battle. We also didn't even have to get our levels too high. They only really matched reds and were even lower than reds. So tell me guys, are you surprised at the power of these babies? Let me know in the comments below how you feel about it and what challenge run you might want to see next. Also, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and check out my other Pokemon challenge runs. I also have a Heart Gold Randomizer Nuzlocke series running that you might be interested in. Look in the description if you want to check that out. But anyways guys, thank you so much for watching and if you made it this far, give the video a like and let me know how you feel about it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good life. Bye bye